Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Good morning, men inside the building and out. All right. Welcome to another and our first edition of the Men's Fellowship Meeting here at Hope Christian Church for 2023. So we thank God that we are here. Yeah. Thank God it's a blessing. Yeah. So this is going to be a great year in Jesus' name. We're going to keep decreeing, keep declaring, keep saying the word of God over our lives or our situations. And we believe that even as the world gets darker and darker, the glory on our lives in the church shall get more and more brighter, more impactful, more precise, more powerful, right? So we thank God for that. So I'm, I'm not Dean Eversley, all right? Dean, Dean Eversley would normally uh, be doing this, and Dean can't be with us today, so God bless you, Dean. You will probably see Dean saying something in the chat, by the way. So he's still online, but he just cannot be in the building uh, today with us, and we are the poorer for it, all right? We are the poorer for it. So love you, Dean. Wish you were here, brother, but we will see you in the flesh soon, but he cannot be here today. So I'll try to do the best job I can with being the MC while Dean is not here because I know he loves doing this part. Dean is the administrative genius behind the men's ministry. So a lot of the ministry that you guys have received um, and the order that's been done has been, Dean has had his fingerprints on it. So we bless God for him. So once again, welcome one, welcome all. If you are new to the men's fellowship meeting and you are watching us online, please make sure you put the information in the chat. Put the information in the chat. Put the, you're all right, brother. You're, you're totally okay. Come on in. <laughs> put the information in the chat if you're watching us for the first time, all right? And I'm talking to the men specifically, even though I know female watch us all the time and there's no problem with you ladies watching us just encourage your friends and your brothers and your husband and all the men your cousins and uncles that should be watching this as well so watch us real time and also watch the recording as well so welcome one welcome all so let's get right to the to the administration and the business of why we are here most of the time when we have our men's fellowship meeting we don't have a lot of fluff not the fact that the women have the fluff, you know what I'm saying? Not the fact that they have that. I'm not saying that they have that, but men get right to the business, or at least I do, and I love that. So we're, I'm only going to be up here a few minutes, then we just have a few things of administration, then we will get right to the word with our guest speaker today, who will be introduced to you in a moment. But I want to talk to you about this year's theme. This year's theme for 2023 is Kingdom Sons Advancing, all right? Kingdom sons advancing, kingdom sons advancing, all right? It's about us advancing in our call. It's about us advancing in our, our destiny. If you've been hanging around us here at Hope Christian Church, you know we are always getting pushed and prodded, pushed to be moving in the gifts, pushed to pray, pushed to believe God for more, pushed to stop being uh, accepting of your current circumstance as is, believe God to touch your family, believe God to touch your mind. We're always being pushed. So we're talking about kingdom sons advancing. So now that push has come to the men's ministry, all right? So once again, please, if you men are in here, pull up your cell phones start texting other brothers as I did before we came online and said, first of all, you should be in the building. That's number one. Number two, watch us online as well. All right, but again, the theme for this year is Kingdom Sons Advancing. And I don't want to just, uh, just tell you about what's happening this year. I also want to quickly cover what happened last year. All right, last year, 2022, we talked about fulfilling our destiny. Everything was about fulfilling our destiny. Everything was about our purpose and how we are living life in the earth. There is a wealth of information that we covered last year. You men need to go back and watch those videos again and again and again that we had all throughout 2022 every other month is when we have our men's meeting every other month all right starting off in january because the men lead out mm -hmm. so the men lead out so uh, real quick when apostle jackson at the beginning of 2022 she was like okay so do you want the women to start off the year with their with their ministry or do you want the men to lead out and i just looked at her and she busted out laughing. I said, you, you have to ask me that question. I said, I feel like you're challenging me. I said, of course the men are going to lead out. So hence the reason why the men have the January slot for our men's meeting. All right. So we covered things last year such as health and finances, investing, exercise, your vision in life. We covered a ton of things, legal issues, how to avoid probate, how to have contracts, all the things to help you and empower you to be effective in this life. All right, so please go back and watch those messages over and over again because there was a ton of information that will be a blessing to you. So watch those messages again and again 
and again and refer people to them. And in 2021, there's a reason why I cover the past stuff. And in 2021, we covered um, the year of the king and the priest, the men as kings and priests. So it's great information. We cover the life of David and a little bit about Joseph. So if you have not watched those messages, I recommend you watch those messages because they are very impactful to how your life has gone, the ups and the downs, the highs and the lows, the good and the bads of life, the things that, that you have gone through was for specific purposes and destiny many times. All right, so please make sure you go back and watch those messages. But once again, the theme for 2023 is Kingdom Sons Advancing. Kingdom Sons Advancing. Advancing in our identity and advancing in our heart issues. Many of you last year should have seen the surge meetings that we had during the summer. And the surge meetings were our midweek Bible studies that we had on Tuesday evenings. It was great messages. But the last three surge meetings, we covered a lot of the father issues, the father's heart. We covered a lot of, the, as we would say in some circles, the daddy issues. All of us have daddy issues. You could have a great father and still have a, a, still have a daddy issue. You know, people are so dynamic. You could have a great father who was around you all the time, but at one situation, he didn't do something that you thought he should have done, and then all of a sudden, it's a problem that you carry throughout your life. So it's amazing how dynamic dynamic people are. So we all have issues and things that we need to comb through and go through, and some people haven't had a good father at all. So, th so they have a problem relating to God when it comes to God as father. So I, I, I was impacted by those messages, and I said, you know what? It's very important. I think we cover the daddy issue and our identity in Christ as Christians as we continue to advance as sons of God. So please be mindful about that. So here's some different announcements and some information for you that you need to know before we open up in prayer and advance in this service. We have a men's Bible study starting today, starting today, starting today. We have a men's Bible study starting today. And the book that we're going to cover is The Warrior's Heart, The Warrior's Heart, Rules of Engagement for a Spiritual a War Zone, for the Spiritual War Zone. Let me say that again. Warrior's Heart, Rules of Engagement for the Spiritual War Zone. It is still time to sign up, it's still time to sign up. So if you haven't gotten the book, we can get you the book. Uh, of course, you're going to have to pay for it because that's a fee for you to go to the class. You got to make sure you pay for your book. You can buy it on your own. You can get it from the ministry, all right? And uh, if you want to reach out and say, well, who's teaching the class? So you can reach out to Pastor David, all right, Pastor David Parlett, Dean Eversley, all right, the men's ministry leader, Dean Eversley, Donovan Paget, or Tim Jackson. Tim Jackson is actually sitting over here as well. So if there's any men in here that want to take that class, go ahead. Go ahead and wave at the brothers there. There, Tim, there you go. Go ahead. So make sure you uh, sign up with him because it's going to be a great time. Tim loves teaching, loves getting with the brothers, and he's a good, solid, solid man of God. All right? One of the things that Dean Eversley wants to institute, and I think it's a great idea this year, is our Brothers Keepers program. Our Brothers Keepers program. All right, a Brothers Keepers program. So what is this? The goal is to build and strengthen relationships among men by creating an environment that supports personal and spiritual growth, development, and accountability towards one another. One way to be uh, great at relationships is to be intentional about it, is to be intentional about it. Like some of you brothers I have met specifically because... Me and Lloyd are always talking during services. Me and Elder Barnes are always talking during services. And we literally strategize about people that we meet. We literally do that. So some of us who actually come to the ministry see us talking on the side all the time. It's not just because we're laughing and having a good time. It's typically because I saw a man that I did not know, and I said, hey, do you know him? He's like, no, I think he's a visitor. And sometimes when the visiting part happens, I'm like, he didn't raise his hand, but I'm going to go introduce myself to him anyway. And then, you know, you become intentional about it. So this Brothers Keepers program is for you to be intentional about your relationships. So the goal is to strengthen one another. So we're going to pair two to three men together and for you to encourage each other throughout the year. So it's a way to forge relationships. It's a way for you to get to know somebody. All right? So this is about personal accountability. It's about uh, speaking with somebody about personal improvement and about sticking to your goals. Because last year we covered so much information. How many of you men have actually decided to make changes to your investments? I did. Yeah. How many of you have actually started to exercise more or tweak your exercise routine? How many men have actually tried to tweak their diet and change the way that they eat? You know what I'm saying? So, so, so you get into relationships to help keep you accountable when it comes to those things so you're just not a renegade doing stuff by yourself. Unless you're built like that. Because some of us are self-starters and we don't really need a whole lot of accountability. But some of us need that. And there's nothing wrong with that. 
I mean, I can work out on my own, but if I work out with somebody, I do go to the next level. I do realize that. You do go to the next level because somebody's there spotting you, yelling at you, screaming at you, kicking at you, doing something like that. All right? So please make sure you stay on tap for the Brothers Keepers program. There will be a way to sign up for this. Dean Eversley will go ahead and unfold that in the weeks and uh, to come, in the days and the weeks to come. But again, it's about building relationships. It's about being intentional, about you spending time with a brother throughout the week. Don't worry. We're not going to monopolize all your time. Time, but you spend time connecting with that brother and go to different events, whether it's activities, events for kids, if you have kids, family functions, Bible studies, books, uh, book uh, studies and things of that nature. So please be mindful of that. All right. And I'm almost done with my section. Also, we are going to be specifically highlighting at this moment, we have our men's conference coming up. All right. Men's conference coming up March 10th through the 12th, March 10th through the 12th, March 10th through the 12th is going to be the men's conference here at Hope Christian Church. So put it on your calendar. Don't act like I didn't know about it. No, you just didn't schedule it. All right. We've already been talking about this. This has already been in our announcements already for at least a couple of weeks. So our, our men's conference is March, March 10th through the 12th. All right. And the theme for the conference is the father's heart. All right. So the theme for the whole year is Kingdom Sons Advancing, but the theme for the conference is the Father's Heart. All right. So we're going to have guest speakers, Pastor Brian Bullock, which is, I believe, in the North Carolina. So he's on the East Coast. And then we have Dr. Philip Godot, who we know and love here at this ministry. And he's way West Coast, Upper West Coast, as a matter of fact. So we got the whole gamut here. So it's going to be a great time of ministry. We're probably going to have a couple of breakout sessions as well. But we want to make sure ministry is always impactful. I don't believe in having sessions just to have sessions. I don't believe in having meetings just to have meetings. But I want to have meetings and sessions for personal and professional and for spiritual impact. Right. That's what we're about here at Hope Christian Church. We are very purposeful. There will be um, a nominal registration fee for about about approximately 25 bucks. uh, And that's to help cover the budget of the conference. And that's one thing I need you all to know here is that when we have registration fees is to cover the costs of the conference. Yes, that's why we have it. All right, so it's, it's very intentional. And so sometimes people say, well, sometimes you don't always have a registration fee because we're still always believing in God, either through the registration fee or to not to meet the budget and to excel and to go past it so we can put some more money in the coffers so you can continue to have great ministry and great conferences. All right? So be mindful about that. And one more thing. Oh, this? This, this right here? The King's Men Apparel. All right, Kingsman Apparel. All right, so let me put something on the screen in a second that talks about the Kingsman Apparel. So hopefully you men, well, Carl, just go ahead and come over here. Now watch Carl as he models. This is his model walk. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? His modeling walk. So as you notice, you'll see, yes, fine quality. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Fine quality, nice cut, zipper, uh, uh, embroidery. I'm not sure how you do this, but, uh, but you know what I'm saying? It's good material. I got one on myself. So we have different T-shirts. We have different things. If you can, put the graphic on the screen, please. I would like that right now, please. Thank you very much. As I'm talking about this, if you can, put the graphic up right now, please. Thank you. And as you see, there you go. All right, so let's step out of the way for a second, Carl. All right, so. This is all the stuff you can get. There's a QR code you can scan. Please make sure you go ahead and order some great stuff. You can order it. There's a, I believe when Dean uh, broached this topic, thank you, Carl. I believe when uh, Dean broached this topic, he said there's about 100 different items that you can get, different kind of colors, uh, different kind of, you know, uh, there's jackets, there's stuff way up in the $100 range. I know um, both jo- Joshua's will go ahead and buy those things in the, in the way up in the $100 range. And there's things like this in the mid range, and there's t shirts and things of that nature. So it's good quality material. So go ahead and get some stuff. And they all have different designs on them, they're not all the same designs. So please make sure you buy something from the King's Men Apparel Collection store. And if you want more information on that, again, see Dean Eversley. So without further ado, we're going to kick this meeting off further with some prayer. And let's introduce Rod Sparks, the Rod of God. Thank you, Pastor. I want to read from the scriptures, um, Ephesians 3, 16. I pray that out out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with the Lord's holy people. To grasp how wide and how long and, and how high and 
deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, we just honor you today, Lord God. We honor you and we put you number one in our hearts, that you, you deserve to be on the thrones of our hearts, that you are preeminent. We, we thank you and we glorify you as King, as Lord, as Daddy, and as Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord God, that you cover the men's ministry for this year, Lord God, and for this service. We pray, Lord God, that you bless the man of God, Lord God, Apostle uh, Dale Mass, Lord God, that you bless him going in and you bless him going out, that we today would eat, Lord God, the spiritual food that you have from heaven, that the good and perfect gifts from God we will receive. And we pray, Lord God, that this men's ministry will multiply this year. We pray in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that you bless the leadership from Pastor Michelle all the way down from Pastor Ricardo and, uh, and, and Dean, Brother Dean, we just pray, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that we will flourish in this season, that we will be strengthened in this season. We pray in the name of Jesus that we will take ground for this season. We will occupy, that we will stand our ground and we will know our identity. We thank you in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that your Holy Spirit will guide us and direct us, that we submit to you, that we obey your word, and that we surrender to your will. We thank you in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that this year, Lord God, will be a different year, that we will be changed, that we will repent and that we will be made whole and that we will be able to stand in the word and for your truth and for the righteousness that you have given us. We thank you in the name of Jesus and we give you all things in glory and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. Oh, and now I want to uh, uh, introduce um, uh, uh, Brother Lloyd. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Rod. Good morning. Good morning, church. It's great to see all of you, so I will be doing the generosity portion of the uh, service this morning. And uh, Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 21 reads, Do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So as I encourage you this morning in your generosity, you know, the scripture clearly says it. We cannot see what is in a person's heart. However, we can uh, tell what matters most to that person by what they spend their time doing, what they spend their resources on, what they spend their money on. So, you know, we as believers, we have to be mindful of that, what we spend our time, resources, money, everything on. So the theme for this year, King's Men uh, Ministry Conference, is the Father's heart, right? So we have to be mindful of that. We have to be intentional with our walk with God. We have to understand, we we have to get rooted in what, what is it the Father is concerned about. You know, he, he, he wants us to care for orphans. He wants us to care for the widows. You know, the disenfranchised. He wants us to do that. He wants us to advance the kingdom. We are part of a kingdom, right? So we have to advance this kingdom. How do we do that? We do that by sowing. We do that by sowing. We do that by sowing into the kingdom. We do that by sowing to advance the kingdom. We do that by sowing to advance the word of God. We do that also like what we did uh Last year at McPherson uh, Square, you know, we, we give out a, a lot of things, food and a lot of uh, personal hygiene things, you know, King Men's Ministry. So I want to encourage you as you give, as you give this morning, you are giving to advance the kingdom of God. You're giving to advance the kingdom of God. You're giving to the hurting folks. You know, you're giving to those who does not have. So your gifts over here at Hope Christian Church does make a difference. And I'm quite sure a lot of you know how to give. You go to our website. If you're trying to give online electronically, you go to our website, thehopeconnection.org. You click on give, and then you also click on the drop-down menu, find a men's ministry. So once you find a men's ministry, you go ahead and give. 
If you're watching online and you would like to give, please follow the instruction that you see appearing on the screen and you can give. You can also give by texting 77977. So text HCC Give to 77977. And for those of you who are in the sanctuary this morning, you will be released in a few minutes to give. So again, I just want to encourage you. We as men, we as kingdom men, you know, we have to give to fund the things that matters to the heart of the Father. We want to discover what is our Father's heart and how we as men, as sons, can also walk in alignment with what matters most to the Father. And giving is one of those things. We cannot move forward as kingdom men. We cannot advance as kingdom men if we are not giving. Because that is how God tests us. You know, are we selfish? Are we greedy? You know, is it just always about ourselves? You know, but are we able to follow the prompting of the Holy Spirit and be able to give when he prompts us to give, be able to be a blessing to someone when he prompts us to be a blessing. So I will pray for the offering, and then you will be released to uh, bring your tithes and your offering. Amen? Amen. Father, we thank you, O oh God, for this time of generosity. You have blessed us tremendously, Lord, and we have come, O oh God, to show our gratitude. We pray, O oh God, that these seeds will be used to advance your kingdom, that it will touch the lives of people who are hurting, oh God, that we will not just minister to their spiritual needs, but will minister to their physical needs as well. We thank you, oh God. We pray that you, oh God, will restore a hundredfold, oh God, to everyone that is giving, and even those who would like to give, oh God, oh God, but don't have to give, we pray that you bless them, oh God. May it not just be financial blessing, but bless them in every area of their life that there is a lack or there is a need. We thank you, we bless you. In Jesus' name. So again, for those of you who are in the sanctuary, you're released to bring your offerings to support the King Men Ministry, the King's Men Ministry. And for those of you watching online, please follow the instruction on the screen and give. While you're bringing your offering, I would like to welcome Elder Hayes, who will be introducing our guest speaker for today. Put your hands together for Elder Hayes. Praise God, praise God. I hope you're all excited. I'm not sure you know what you're in for. Okay, we got one person excited, which is great, and we'll bring the rest along. But I'm here to introduce our guest speaker, and we're so excited to have him with us today. So Apostle Dale and Luann Mass serve as the senior pastors to Destiny Christian Church, a multicultural church in Dover, Delaware where he served for 40 years. The Lord gave Dale a dream to retire as pastor to give his, give his attention to the next season of apostolic call as a prophet to the nations that travel nationally and internationally as speakers. Dale is also known for his books, his teachings, and his accurate prophetic words to individuals, churches, and nations. He has written four books. Apostle Dale and Luann minister to the networks, pastors, churches, men's and women's retreats, church leadership, believers, non-believers, as well as serve on several church and ministry boards that have been featured on his Supernatural, God TV, Elijah Streams, as well. In, in 2023, Del will host his own show on Sid Roth's network. That's wonderful. Uh, on Sid Roth's network. Del and Luann are ordained by Dr. Bill Hammond of Christian International and serve with him on the Board of Governors. Give a great Hope Christian Works welcome to Apostle Dale Mast. Amen. Amen. Now, while you're standing up to your feet, and I want to thank all of you for being here and those of you online, but my purpose today is to unlock the genius that God buried inside of you. Now, the Bible says that a man, he found a, a pearl of great price in a field, and so he bought the field. 
But some of you haven't bought into yourself because you've not found what God deposited in you. And I want you to declare this and just say this. Put your hand over your heart. Father God created me out of his genius. And he put part of his genius inside of me. But I have to get close enough to him to unlock it. So I'm buying in into who he made me. There'll never be another me on this earth. Now think about that for a minute. I'm his one shot. It's something unique. Nobody else can do it. No plan B. I'm about to show up. And he's going to unlock my genius. Let's give Father God a hand clap. Hallelujah. Amen. Now you may be seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And uh, I follow football to some level. I like the team sport. I realize that I might be in the commander territory as an Eagles fan, but you did beat us once without our quarterback. Sort of like the body of Christ, if we don't submit to Jesus, we're not the same team. we got to have our quarterback. But you also have to have gifted receivers. In the church, the problem is we've been the achievers, not the receivers. I'm not against achieving, but the deal is, first you must receive, then you take what you receive and you achieve with it. John said of Jesus... No man can have anything unless it's been given to him from heaven. I want you to say this with me. I've received things from heaven to break hell off of earth. Now, see, some people just want to receive enough to go to heaven, but there's others that want to receive enough to bring heaven to earth. Where you go, hell should back off because you have authority from the king. Everything, and I, I just talk about this briefly as I get in today, but I first of all want to honor uh, in, in my heart uh, Bishop Harry Jackson, who I've known for probably not as a close friend back 30 years ago uh, at another building, and we've off and on, but the last couple of years of his life we talked because my wife passed away of cancer as well. And so through prophetic words and situations, God connected us. But I was so blessed to uh, meet Pastor uh, Michelle, and uh, he referred to her in our conversations. And I'll save some of those remarks for Sunday morning. (laughs) But I remember prophesying to him, and the Lord showed me the two buildings he had that was between the high school and I guess this building. I've never been in this building before. But how many of you know there's a faith that's it's Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? There's an anointing that comes down, and we'll talk more about this. But I want to just say this. I have four books, and, and uh, I never thought I'd write a book. I really, I love to study the Bible. I didn't really like reading other people's books that much even though I I did have uh, some of Bishop Harry Jackson's books. I'd read the first third, and I'd sort of, uh, I don't know why. It just, uh, most books did not hold my attention past half. There's, I'd read full, and this is, I'm not bragging. It's just, I never thought I'd write a book. And uh, how many of you know there's some things you don't think that God already knows? Some of you are about to get some surprises from heaven. Some of you thought you'd never own a business. You're about to get surprised. Uh, some of you thought, well, I'll never be that rich. You're about to get surprised. Some of you thought, I never thought I'd be that anointing. Well, he is Jehovah's surprise. Amen. And uh, I'll tell you, there's two levels of surprises. One is Moses was surprised when he was trapped at the Red Sea. He's like, God, what are you doing to me? He's crying out to God. And uh, 
he's down on his face. And I like the way God talked to him. He said, what are you doing crying? Stand up and lift up your rod. And what God was saying to Moses, you're not going to pray your way through this one. You're going to have to stand up and show some authority. Because you crying out to me is not where we're going to relate anymore. Just stand up, be the man, raise your hand. I want everyone to just take your right hand and raise it up. Now see what happens. God said, I want to show myself strong through you, but you have to act like you know me. This isn't nursery anymore. You're not in kindergarten. You're off of, you're off of the milk, Moses. You're into the meat. I need you to act like a deliverer to show me as a deliverer. Now, see, this is interesting. Moses did not want to go to Egypt. The Israelites didn't want him in Egypt. The Egyptians were hunting him down. Moses didn't want to go back. The only person that wanted Moses in Egypt was God. He even said after, can you imagine a a burning bush and your staff turns into a snake and you look at God and say, would you get somebody else? That's a lot of nerve. And you know what it says? God burned with anger. Read it. You know why? Because God had saved Moses from the waters where he should have been drowned as a kid. And God said, you're my water man. I don't have choice B. That's bad theology. If you don't do it, somebody else will do it. The truth is, if you don't do it, it won't get done. You may say, well, I'm not going to change the world, but you can change somebody's world who changed somebody else's world. You don't know who you're touching. You don't know who they will touch. This stuff is like, uh, what do they call it, upline or something like that. But this, when you start touching people, listen, There's over a billion Christians in the world that started with 120 people praying. Can you imagine three years of ministry and all Jesus has is 120 people in the upper room? Looks like failure. No, it's God's genius. Some of you, you'll walk past things that look small and actually it was God's invitation for something big. But because it was too small, you missed your God opportunity. Don't ever think you might not have to go down to come up. Because whatever door God opens, it may look like a little door. But you know what? What I've found is if I come to your house, I walk through one door. But as soon as I walk in, I see five to seven doors. One door that looks insignificant can open up all kinds of doors you never dreamed of. I find that when I humble myself, God exalts me. Several times I've exalted myself and God humbled me. If we do our job, he won't have to do our job. You'll get that later. Stay humble and watch him exalt you, but expect greatness. I want to talk today. uh, I just want to say this part on this here. Change does not come to earth because we believe we must be willing to lead the vision. A lot of people have faith for what God's going to do, but I'm talking to you as leaders. Those that lead will change what's around them, not just those who believe. So what you believe has to change what's around you. So as we just came past Martin Luther King Day, and you know, the thing is, you have to be able to look at a nightmare and still be able to dream if you want to change the earth. If you can't dream in the middle of a nightmare, God has to go to look for someone else. See, that's what visionaries, we're not reporters saying what's happening. We're decreers. We're calling that which is not as what it should be. And it shifts a nation. One man changed a problem. But there's still more problems to change. Can you look at a problem and dream or do you look at it and complain? Sissies don't need to show up. We need men of God. (laughs) Okay. I know I have the right crowd because I know Bishop Harry Jackson. And uh, my wife wrote a book, and I'll let her talk maybe a little bit more, but God, I feel like Cinderella and uh, her story of how she she came with me. And 
And uh, I guess if she's Cinderella, I guess that makes me a prince. So I'll just, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> How many of you know that you married above your pay grade? Just be honest. When she said yes, you thought, man, I'm so blessed. If she knew, hallelujah, i tell you. Uh, this is my bestseller. I'm going to be talking about it tomorrow. Had a man stop me in Nashville, and he said, uh, I don't know who you, I didn't know who you were when you were speaking, but we started a business three years ago, a startup company. We had 10 books to read. Your book was the first one, and our company is worth $14 million today. Now, they had to be smart enough to read my book, but they had to be smart enough to, read the, to raise that company up. And I will tell you this, this book, it changed my life to write it. It's now in about eight to nine languages. Uh, I'm going to Korea to teach on it. I have open invitations from Brazil, Romania, Germany. Uh, so I'm just saying, of all my books, if you get one book, read this. It'll unlock part of your genius. Uh, I tell you, it's just that powerful. You may say, I'm taking a little bit of time, but I'm teaching you something. If God is raising up a tabernacle of David's, that means that there's going to, it's not a, a tabernacle with a sign on it that says David. It actually means a Davidic spirit that believes they can take down Goliath because they're that close to God. I want you to think about it. What, other, what makes other people afraid actually becomes your point of promotion. And I'll say this again tomorrow. David ran toward Goliath, a shepherd, but he walked away a warrior. If you don't allow your victories to change your identity, you'll never sign up for the correct assignment. So I ain't going to say any more because that's tomorrow. And I'll encourage you to invite your friends, your family, because... This has the ability to shift somebody because it's the word of God. It's really about David. It's about my life. But in the end, it's really about your life and what God wants to do through you. You have not fulfilled your destiny until you help somebody else reach theirs. You can't give other people victory until you win. But don't let your victory stop with you. Pass it on. Do you understand what I'm saying? Especially those of you that are older, you should be coaching other people in victories you've won because you cannot take people where you've not had victory. Think about it. And you never have victory that really means anything unless it was actually a big problem. So people that got off drugs, they'll get other people off of drugs. Are you with me? I, I never was on drugs. Uh, I don't get people off of drugs. I've helped a couple, but I know pastors, they were into drugs, selling drugs, and they get a lot of people in their church off drugs. Why? Because their life is a key to that person. Where you've had your greatest problem is actually where you can lead people in greatest victories. Tell me where you've been hurt, and I'll tell you where you can help somebody. Now, if you've never been hurt, I don't even want to go to lunch with you, let alone war, because you're lying. <laughs> I don't go to lunch with liars. If you've not been hurt, you're probably just five days old. I mean, when the, when the doctor pulled you out, they whacked you on the butt. I mean, you got hurt from birth. <laughs> you, okay, so we got that one covered. <laughs> uh, I want to just a little bit shattering limitations of pain. Uh, this story about Jabez, this is the part I want to tell you. I'll, I can't get into this. Every painful event was actually to make you feel unworthy or set a, set a limitation on what you would expect from God. The problem is when you get a lower expectation, you can actually succeed thinking it's everything God had for you and you actually got short sheeted by the devil. Some of you, listen, Desti success is a cheap imitation of destiny, but destiny always has success. Billy Graham could have built the largest church in America, but God called him to evangelize the whole world. 
He could have built a church of 10,000, got to heaven, and he said, look what I built for you. He said, I never called you to build that. I called you to reach the whole world. That's why a lot of people have success, but they're never happy because success has become an imitation for destiny. Think about it. So when I say you fulfill your destiny means you have to help somebody in theirs, I want you to think about it this way. Jesus did not come to earth to win over the devil. He already kicked him out of heaven. Amen. He came to earth so you and I could win. When you step into the room next time, you're not there to win. You're there to help somebody else win. You should have already won. Does that make sense to you? As uh, about 20 years ago, I was walking into a church and I prophesied and I said, Lord, I wonder if they're going to receive me. Maybe it's less than 20, but around 20. He said, Dale, those days are over. I said, what? He said, I'm, you're not going into there to see if they receive you. You're going in to see who you can receive because you're a father. A father is not looking to be received. A father is receiving children, grandchildren, great, great, grand. Are you with me? Your anointing is not to wait till somebody in this church notices you as a father, but for you to notice who needs a father, Amen. who needs somebody to come alongside them. You're going to make it. I see greatness in you. Had a man stand in front of me while well, sitting in front of me in office, and he said, I don't think I can make it. He was in a very hard place. He said, I, I think I'm going to quit. I can't make it. I just looked at him, and I said, I know you've lost your faith, but until you find your faith, you can use mine. I'm telling you, you're going to make it. He left the room. I got on my knees. I said, oh, God, help him. He's a mess. <laughs> it, it shook me. <laughs> I was real. You're going to make it. I walked up. Oh, God, help him. <laughs> but see, let somebody else use your faith, even if you have to pray a little bit harder. Don't you let their story cause you to agree with defeat. You be their rock. You be represent them. You represent the heart of God to them. Does that make sense? I want you to say this with me. I was created to represent his faith to somebody who can't see his face. I didn't say faith. I said face. Do you know that when Moses came down from that mountain, the glory was on his face and he never needed Aaron to speak for him again. When you get the glory on you, your last insecurity of what you can't do leaves. And you start representing God in a whole nother level. Some of you, listen, if you're younger, you pray for wisdom, you study for wisdom. It's part of maturing. But some of you as fathers, what happens is you need to start realizing you still ask him for it. But when you realize, when you step in the room, wisdom just stepped in the room. You know, there are certain people, when they step in the room, they bring devil and demons in. Why can't you and I bring the Father and angels in? Come on. Don't tell me they can do more with evil than we can do with God. I mean, Satan isn't God bad. He's just a bad worship leader. He's a worship leader that went Motown or some town kind of town. I don't know. Anyway, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> he got thrown down. He is not God. He is not his equal. So in this, what I want to talk about today is two fathers and a son. Now, I'm going to tell you my goal, and I'm going to demonstrate it tomorrow a little bit more, but I'm going to tell you right now, that until you see God as your father, you'll never bring heaven to earth the way he wants you to. I'm going to just read the back of the book because I poured over this for hours and I can't say it better than what I wrote it. The prodigal did not want to live in his father's presence. The older son did not know how to live in his father's presence. Did you get that? The one didn't want to, the other one didn't know how. Both sons had the same problem. They both desired fatherless parties. 
Remember, the prodigal, when he got his money, went out and had a party with all his other friends. Father's not there. The, product, the, the older son said, you never threw a party for me and my friends. Like, you're throwing the party, but he wasn't even counting on his father being there. He just wanted him to foot the bill, provide the goat. The younger son wasted his inheritance while the older son slaved in the midst of his, trying to earn what he refused to receive. Remember what happened? What the prodigal, now listen, who would you say was the more righteous, the prodigal or the elder son? Don't answer right away. I know who lived better, but I didn't say who was more righteous. The prodigal knew how to get his inheritance. He asked for it. Do you know what God said scripturally? You have not because you... Do you know some of us, we're trying to earn an inheritance, but we are too proud to ask God for it. What happened, the elder son is watching his father give and divide the inheritance. Now, how many of you know... If there's two sons and the father divides the inheritance and he gives them the inheritance, what happened? Because if he's giving it to the prodigal, he's also giving it to the elder. But what happened? The elder brother got upset with Father God and he said, you're giving it to my brother who doesn't deserve it. And he judged his father and it stopped him from receiving what his father was giving him when the prodigal asked for it. Now, I know this has never happened to you, but it happened to me. I was poor. I was so poor, I spelled it with three O's. I lived one block of a crack alley in my city, and nobody stole from me because they stole in the neighborhoods I now live in. And if you've ever lived in a bad neighborhood, you know this, there's a loyalty that's territorial. If you live there, you're good, but you don't want to visit 10 years after you leave. The same place you were safe, you will not be safe anymore. I even had, actually had a drug dealer, and, and listen, I was, it, it, I was part of the city that was white flight. I was one of two. I was two white that lived on my street, and the other were they were too old to move. So you know what I'm saying? Hispanic, African-American, drug dealer. But I had somebody else who wasn't on my block when I was taking groceries in, took groceries out of my car. The drug dealer across the street, who's my friend, stopped the guy. Put those groceries back in. That's my friend. I'm going to tell you something. You need to be friendships with people that ain't right because they'll help you down the road. You say, well, you may judge them, but listen, that family ended up coming to the Lord. Don't you ever think that the road to success is not marked with challenges? In that, what I, uh, there was a point I was trying to make. Can you keep your eyes on the prize when it doesn't look like the blessing is coming in the area you need it? Can you keep your eyes on the vision? So when, when people come, young men come to my house and they say, well, man, you have a nice house. And I do. I said, but you don't know how I got here. I sacrificed. Amen. And when I sold that house, I actually put $10,000 to buy land, 42 acres of land. And I lived in a 12 by 60 with three kids in another neighborhood people wouldn't want to live in. Why? I had a vision. If you don't have sacrifice in your life, you're not going to greatness. Some of you, it'll be money. Some of you, it'll be time. But there is no, if there's no sacrifice, there is no great blessing that's from heaven. Show me the size of your cross and I'll tell you the size of your throne. Jesus was on the biggest cross. That's why he has the biggest throne. He gave it all. He gets it all. 
Don't think you can give half and get it all. This is not no flea market swap out. (laughs) You're going to get what you pay for. You can't shop at Walmart and expect Macy's quality. I'm not knocking Walmart. How many of you know what I'm saying? I got a little story. I just need to tell this to men. I I realize Pastor Michelle's here, but she's okay. Let me tell you about Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve walking through the garden. Woman picked up, picked the apple. And man's been paying for the woman's sin ever since. Because the devil's in the mall and she has not stopped picking up stuff. And if you don't let that woman shop, all hell's going to break out. That's all I'm telling you. You know what I figured out? The Lord blessed me enough to afford my wife shopping. So you ought to be thankful. (laughs) Anyway, I mean, we have to have a little bit of fun. Okay. So anyway. Which reminds me. My my wife wants me to buy her a gift for Valentine's Day. But I, I, I have more to share on that tomorrow. Okay, so in this, what I want you to realize is that we cannot, you cannot earn your inheritance. I want you just to say this with me. Father God, I'm asking you for my inheritance. I receive it in Jesus' name. Now, see, you need an inheritance to fulfill your destiny on earth. The church teaches you get your inheritance when you go to heaven. No, you get your reward. To die actually takes you out of an inheritance. To get one, somebody had to die. And Jesus is saying, I died to give you an inheritance. Would somebody please pick it up? But we have a religious spirit. You don't need your inheritance in streets of gold. You need it in the nasty now and now. You need it in a broke world. You need to display the goodness of God. And I'm going to tell you something. Don't let fear news get on you when God has given you an inheritance. Because God can prosper you no matter what's going on. That it says what? He planted, who was it? It was Isaac. He sowed in a time of famine and reaped a hundredfold. I want to go another way. God was judging all of Israel, had them in Babylonian captivity, yet God, listen, God's judging. He could be judging the whole church. He could be judging all Israel. That doesn't keep Daniel from standing up and ruling in the land of the oppressors. You were not even limited because God is judging the church unless you live under that kind of mindset. You can get close enough to God to actually live in a different realm while he's dealing with his own people. Everybody smile. Say, I can rise to the top when everybody else is held at the bottom because I connect to Father God. Now, Something you have to realize is you can't take everybody where you're going. But you may have to feed them. If you've not been sold by your family, you're not a Joseph. Who talked about killing you first. These are the first 12 tribes of God's people. Isn't it sweet? If you've not been hurt by family, I know you can't be a Joseph. They had to sell you for you to be a Joseph, but you're not a Joseph unless you feed the family that talked, that sold you into slavery. Everybody say the 12 tribes. Sort of like the church. (laughs) Hello? Family. Same. 
I mean, we're not talking another people. We're talking your own brothers, some of them half-brothers. How many know everybody has a couple half-brothers who are jealous of the favor God's given you? Now listen, this is a deal. When those 11 sold Joseph, they sold their inheritance. Don't sell a half-brother Believe for their blessing. Don't ever get jealous. You know what jealousy is? It believes that God has shallow pockets that when he blesses one brother, he don't have enough to really bless another brother. Jealousy means you think God's unfair. It's actually a judgment against him. When you expect goodness from God and favor over your life, do you know what that means you're saying? You believe he's a great God, he's a just God. You're actually, it's worship, but if you get upset because somebody else gets ahead of you, listen, I've lived long enough to see people ahead of me, and I'm thinking, God, what about me? What about me? I know more than them, and they're speaking, and I'm not getting to speak. How many of you ever felt that way? Be honest. Lord, I've been holier. That's what I was telling you about when I was talking about where I lived. I said, I've been a better brother. This one guy I was working with, was painting in summer when I was poor. That's where I was going, you know, when I talked about the sacrifice. We were painting together in the summer because I was a school teacher. And we didn't, I didn't make anything. And I had been in two years like Peace Corps where I didn't make anything before I got married. So I was poor, making poor. But God was still blessing me. How many of you know? I was, I, I was wise enough and God opened up the door to buy a house and bought property and, and that property increased 30 times in value. How many of you know God knows how to sneak a blessing up on you when you sacrifice and obey? So anyway, but that took 25 years. That's why I live in a nice house today because I sacrificed 35 years ago and trusted God. So, you know, when you talk to people about greatness, don't just talk about what you can get. Just say, are you, what are you willing to sacrifice to get there? Because if people don't sacrifice, they'll waste it. Don't you hand your kids your bank account, hand them a vision in a spirit to sacrifice. Do you know 80% of all millionaires, this is a fact, today is new money. Do you know what that means? That 80% of the millionaires that gave money to their kids wasted it. You might as well enjoy your life because your kids will waste it. <laughs> Just, uh, anyway, <laughs> 80% of them. Leave them enough to let them know you love them, but don't leave them so much that they don't have to believe God. Amen. All right? You say, I don't want them to go through what I went through. What? What you went through made you great if you made the right choices. What you went through showed that the God is great. What you went through proved that what life gave you was not going to stop what Father God could give you. You are God's poster child of his greatness. You're a testimony of his goodness. You are a person that actually says, if God does that for them, could he do it for me? Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so here we are. We're going around the corner. Now, the reason I didn't bring notes is because I want to talk out of my spirit to your spirit. In this, I was complaining to God. I said, God, this guy I'm, 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 I'm painting with, he's going home and drinking his Bud Light, and his wife has complained that he's getting a little bit drunk because the football game went a little bit longer, and now he's not just drinking one or two like he started off, but now he's into his... He is six pack and he's a worship leader and I know he ain't living right and, and I'm poor and he's poor and he comes home, he comes Monday morning and he says, uh, praise God, Dale. He said, I got $500 in my mailbox. And I was like, yeah, praise God. You got $500. And I'm like, God, you see him drinking his bud. What about me? There was nothing in my mailbox. And the Lord spoke to me so clear. He said, Dale, He's asking by faith, and he knows it's by grace. You're trying to earn it, and I can't do that. Because if you earn it, you become my employee, 
I need you to receive it as a son. Sons get an inheritance. Employees get a paycheck. Which do you want? See, we are working to try to get the favor of God when Jesus died to give it. And what we're doing is we're shoving what he did on the cross to the side like it wasn't important. When Jesus died on that cross, he was saying, I'm giving you back the inheritance Adam lost. I'm giving you inheritance rights on this earth to have dominion. I'm giving you authority that if you'll receive this, you can have it. Now, how many of you follow a little bit of football and you know Tom Brady, right? Yeah. One of the greatest quarterbacks. Do you remember about eight to ten years back when he lost all of his receivers? You know, the one guy went to jail for murder, sounds like the church, killed somebody, told the Lord the devil did it. You know, we can kill people's reputation with our word. Then we had Walker. He just got, well, somebody offered him a little bit more. I think I'll get a little bit more money over this other church or this other. And then you got the guy uh, that Bromkowski or what, you know, he hurt his back. And uh, so here's Tom Brady and God had the same problem. He can get it to him, but he don't have enough experienced receivers. You know what an experienced receiver looks like? Oh, I worship you, God. I worship you. See, experienced receiver, he runs, he puts his hands up before he looks because the ball's going to be there. And he knows how to catch what's been thrown. And see, we've been achievers, but we've not been. You start to worship before you see the ball and then watch it come into your hands. And you have worshipers can catch what heaven throws. And see, you're not really a worshiper until everything's backwards and you can still worship and not complain. God will test your worship level. And uh, and the Lord said to me, he said, uh, he said, you're trying to earn. And you're living better, but I can't do business with better. I have to do business with a son, not with a better employee. Because, see, I was raised Mennonite. How many of you were raised in church? You were taught how to do it right. And, and, you know, really, see, when God starts blessing somebody that we think is more messed up than us, we start judging him like that elder brother, and we start losing what he is offering because now we won't ask. We're just trying to do better. or trying, Are we trying to shame God into giving it to us? I've been better, so you have to give it to me. If you gave that person this, I know you have to give this to me. Now, I know none of you have ever thought that. I think I just put words to some of the things we felt. How many of you know our flesh is all crazy? If you understand yourself, you understand other people. But if you don't understand what, what's going on inside of you, you cannot understand other people. The reason I know this goes on in you because I finally figured out what was going on in me because I had these feelings, but I didn't put words to it. When I put words to it, then I could repent. So now what I say is, devil, and anybody you come through, you just don't want to mess with me. Just say it with me. Devil, and anybody you come through, you don't want to mess with me. My father delights in me. It's his delight. And you're messing with somebody. It's very important to him. A son. You mess with me. He's coming after you because he's given me favor. And if you try to stop me, it's going to hurt you. Now, how many of you know there's some people tomorrow when they get that ball, they're thinking, if you want to stop me, you're going to get hurt. And they only weigh 230 pounds. And here we have the weight, the kabod of Father God. And he's given us the ball and angels are in front of us and he's behind us. And he's saying, this is my son. He's coming through. He's coming through. Listen, his only begotten son, he took him. He blocked all the way through hell. Three days, pushed back demons, pushed back the devil, rose him from the dead. I'm telling you, God has several issues. First of all, he thinks he's God. 
And second of all, he thinks he wins all the time. I like his issues. He is God. He has never thought about losing. And when he looks at you, he's never thought about losing. Only you and the devil have. He thinks about you winning. When he made you, he planned on winning through you big time. How many of you are believing that he will do something great through your life? I'm not talking just... One time the, the Lord just interrupted my thought. He said, Dale, how do you see yourself? It's about 15 years ago. I said, I see myself above average. He said, I got two problems with that. I never saw myself as a loser, but I never saw myself as a complete winner. And I heard the Lord say, I got two problems with you seeing yourself above average. Number one is, I didn't die for you to be above, above average. I died for you to win. I want you to say this. He died for me to win. Not just get my soul to heaven, but for me to win on earth. Show me in the life of Jesus where he ever lost on earth. There's no place. So if he did not lose on earth... That tells me, if he says, follow me, what he's saying, would you follow me into my wins? I had a friend at uh, a high school reunion said, you know, I was drafted by the Rams back in the 70s. I didn't take it on. And that year, they won the Super Bowl. Even if I would have not played, I would have still got the ring because I was on the team. How many of you know you're on a Super Bowl ring team? Because our quarterback has the ring. Some of you ought to be acting like you have already the victory before you face your Goliath. You need to tell Goliath he's going down before you even put the stone in your sling. David won the battle with words before he ever did anything with his stone. I will tell you this, if you don't win the battle of words in your mind, you are already defeated. If I can listen to you, not on what you say Sunday morning, but what you say on Monday morning. See, Sunday morning is your confession. And it's keep on confessing, but Monday morning is your declaration. That's what you actually believe. See, so on Sunday, I can do all things through Christ. Monday morning, oh God, help me. I don't know if I'm going to make it. You got your confession on Sunday, your declaration on Monday. And God said, I really wanted to show up. I thought they were actually trusting me, but now they're speaking doubt. When you speak doubt, the devil can get a hold of it and run you around. Now, the first thing, and I'm going to talk about this more, is... You need to receive who God made you. I just want you to say, thank you, Father God, for who you made me, how you made me, the talents you gave me, the genius you gave me, and the things you didn't give me. Now, you know, some of you, God didn't give a good voice. So you would not be confused that you should be on the worship team. I know Joe, this guy, he's the only guy I knew who could clap off rhythm and sing a song and not hit one note. I'm telling you, he did not hit one note, but his worship was like, this is the day. This is. But when I stood beside him, I felt the glory of God because he was worshiping God. But whatever you do, don't give him a mic. Nobody could sing. I couldn't even sing on key beside him. But the glory coming off, listen, he was a worshiper elite. But he was never designed to be on the worship team. But he had authority when he would pray. Would you get on to what God has called you to do instead of asking him to help you what you weren't made for? If I could just sing, then I'd be important. No, you're important and you can't sing because it's a clue of where you need to go. 
Think about it. What is the greatness that God's put in you? In my David book, I talk about that. There'll be more tomorrow. Now, and that is the right time, right? 1109 in front of me, okay? Now, how many of you are feeling challenged by the way you see yourself? Every time God met with somebody in the Bible, he had to change the way they saw themselves more than the way they saw God. Moses knew God could take them out of Egypt. He just didn't believe it was him. Are you following what I'm saying here? He said, God, I know, just go get someone else. I know you could do this, but I don't believe you can use me. I can't get in tomorrow, so I have to stop there. Now, this is a part. Asking is the privilege of son, an authority hidden from orphans. Do you realize there are things your son can ask and get from you as a father, and they might even be struggling with drinking? They can ask for things even though I'm more anointed, I could never ask you for. Your son could say, hey, can I come home and stay for a year? And he's, he's still a mess. Because he's your son, you'd take him in. If I said I needed a place for a year, you'd be like, uh, maybe three days. Well, I'm more anointed. No, but you're not my son. So what I'm saying to you, it's better to be a son to the father that's a little messed up than an orphan who's perfect. You have more rights to ask from God like a prodigal who has issues than the other one who was self-righteous who felt he was better. See, because the older son is thinking, I'm better, and the prodigal, he had more revelation. I just need to ask my dad. I can get it because I'm his son. Some of you will not ask God because you realize you're not perfect. Is it his perfection that gets it done or is it yours? You won't ask because you don't think you're good enough. That's the devil deceiving you because when are you ever going to be good enough to get it? How about we lean into his goodness instead of ours? How about we shift our eyes toward him? And listen, when I lean into his goodness, he starts showing me the greatness that's in me. If I lean into my goodness, he will never reveal my greatness because I'm already self-centered. I want to be father-centered because you'll never find your identity staring in a mirror. You find it staring into your father's face. You show me a father who can sing, I'll show you a son who can sing. You show me a father who can play football, I'll tell you, I'll show you a son that probably can play football. You show me a father who knows business, I'll show you a son who knows. I had a young man, he said, my father didn't give me anything. He drank, he beat my mother, he beat me, I hate him. You're telling me that there's something good my father gave me. So I just looked at the man. I said, tell me, what do you do? I, he said, because I knew it was going to come right out. He said, I'm a businessman. I said, successful? He said, yes. I said, tell me, was your father a successful businessman? He said, yes. I said, did you think that come out of thin air? God had you birth in the family and I don't care if you never met your dad, if you never knew your mom. You say, well, Dale, your life is different. No, my grandfather was actually an orphan. My father was the oldest son raised by an orphan. That's why I wrote a book on identity, because that was my struggle that my father handed me. My father was better than my grandfather as far as, father to father, 
my grandfather, because I was the oldest grandson, he treated me like gold. So I actually had one of my uncles tell me, I wish my dad would have treated me the way he treated you. If you've felt rejected by your father, remember what I said about drugs? God wants to make you a father because what you don't have, you treasure and you give to other people as a blessing. Think about it. God created all mankind. God, the creator of all mankind, desires to be your father. When the disciples asked Jesus how to pray, the first two words he gave them was what? Our Father. My daughter walked up to me one Sunday. I preached on that. And she said, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Remember that? But how does it? She said, I think the hallowed name of God is our Father. Everybody say, Our Father. Now say this, my father. father. Look at somebody else, our father. father. My father. father. Until it becomes my father and our father, we don't know him as father. I have something to share on that, but that has to be tomorrow. I got to keep on focus. Now I have to remember all these things I promised. I have to watch this again. (laughs) Because all these things are interfaced together. Our Father sets the tone and the reality of the entire prayer. If these two words do not grip our hearts, the rest of the words lose context as well as implicit favor that comes from that dynamic personal relationship. Do you know, if you have a father... You can ask him things you cannot ask other people. Other people, you'd have to weigh it out. But your father, you just would ask. A level of expectation. Now, there could be such a broken relationship, but it normally, you can ask your father. There are keys to receiving our inheritance that are absolutely necessary to fulfill our destiny. And this is the part I want to end with. The prodigal was restored by his father's love and mercy But it's his father's celebration that completed and empowered his life. I want to talk about this for a minute. We see when he came back, he received back the robe. And when you think about this, the best robe you ever wear is not the one in your closet. It's the one in your father's closet that belonged to him. He did not get back his robe. The father pulled out one of his robes and put it over him. Do you realize when you and I got born again, we gave up our robe and he grabbed a robe out of his closet and put it over us? You need to have a coat and just put on the sew on the inside, my father's coat. It'll make you walk different, talk different, expect different. Because when your father gives you a coat, it gives you an identity. You belong. You have authority. You mess with me, you mess with my father. You don't want to rip on his coat. Angels will knock you out. This thing was bought with blood. And it doesn't run It runs over the darkness and the enemy. You were made to crush darkness. Wear your father's coat. You know, it's interesting. We don't have the armor of Christians. We have the armor of God. God said, here, you'd like my shield of faith? You want my helmet? This is the stuff from heaven. This isn't. It's the armor of God. God's armor. I don't understand it. I just know it works. I can't even explain how Jesus, who was God, died on a cross because God can't die. 
I can't even explain how this oxygen I'm breathing is keeping me alive, but I enjoy it. If I had to explain everything I do, I'd be dead. <laughs> if, I under, if I had to understand it to enjoy it, how many of you know you, you like drinking water, but you don't want to be held under? <laughs> you, you'll get it later. Okay. I can't explain it. I need water, but I don't need that much. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so as we go on. So in that relationship with Father God, we start getting into favor. Now, I want to talk just a minute about this. We have confused in the church favor with favoritism. Favoritism means I'm the most beautiful, so everybody looks to me. Favoritism is based off of performance. I receive it because I'm the best athlete. I receive it because I'm the smartest. I'm the, I'm the most. There's only room for one with favoritism. Are you with me? But favor, favoritism is based off of performance which orphans basically what I do makes me received versus who I belong to. So if you have favoritism, you're always in the point of, well, is somebody else better looking coming along? Is somebody a little bit wiser coming along? Does somebody have a little bit bigger church? Does somebody have a little bit bigger business? Or, see, that's favoritism. It'll drive you nuts because it's based on what you do, not who you are. Favor is based on the love of the Father. Favor can be over everyone. Favoritism can only go to one person in a crowd. See, favoritism, the teacher's pet. They'll give them that A when they deserve to see minus. They'll help them out. I've actually saw a teacher help a student by saying different things, lead them into the right answer, but cut another person off because they didn't answer it correctly right away. Favoritism is demonic. Favor is godly. So what it means is I have the favor for my assignment. I don't have to be the best looking man. Even though I know my wife thinks I'm handsome, I will never discourage her from that reality. (laughs) But when I look in the mirror, I think, man, I'm blessed to have her. (laughs) Shh, don't tell her anything. Because I'll just be the man. But in my mind, I thought, you want me? Okay. How many of you know, sometimes we're that way with God. You want me? God said, you look good to me because I made you in my image. You look good to me because I put part of my genius in you. I'd like to use you to show my greatness. But you're going to have to come first as a son. And you receive. Sons receive. Then as a man of God, you take what you receive and you achieve with it. But you have to receive first. That way, everything you achieve, you give him glory. Because if you had not received it, how many know none of you work to gain your IQ? Michael Jordan did not work to gain his body, but he disciplined it until he became a basketball player. But how many of you know, I could discipline my body till Jesus comes and I'll never be Michael Jordan. You may have a brilliant mind. You may have went to college, end up being a doctor. But you are not the one that gave yourself that IQ. You just achieved with what you received. Now, in this, God gives gifts. He gives gifts of the Spirit. He gives fruit of the Spirit. But he also gives gifts of abilities. Everybody say abilities. If you took all the body of Christ, squeezed them together, it would actually be the fullness of the body of Christ without the head. He retains that. But in it, what that means is you and I all carry part of the genius of Father God. Now, I want to do some ministry because I've taught enough I want to speak prophetically over some of your lives and even some of you under the sound of the voice that are 
out there watching online. I want to thank you for taking this time. I want to encourage you. We have, <clears throat> we have these books. We'll be making a deal of all these books here uh, that you can get them on Amazon. And I have a teaching that $400 worth of CDs that are now just crunched into this. How many re remember what eight tracks were? Cassettes. CDs. I was talking about eight tracks and all these kids were like, what's an eight track? <laughs> you know, you had the little matches, you shoved it in the side. Okay, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but uh, over 300, almost $400 worth of teaching series. I don't put anything on here that just to put it on because I've pastored 40 years. I just put on what really changed me because that's what will change you. And uh, all these books and all that, we're going to do a special. If you get a download, we're going to work it out where you can do it, get it for all these books for 89. If you get it with this, 99. And we do, we do take Jehovah Visa. That means you have faith to pay tomorrow what you buy today. We have a little machine. And uh, if it don't change your life, I'll give you your money back. I do travel a lot. You have to find me, but I will give you your money back. But you have to read it. Devotion. On my book, I tell people, read it. David book, put it down. Let it go deep in your heart. Shift your identity. I'm going to talk about it tomorrow because God would like to do something through you he's never done to this point. How many of you are ready for new? I don't care. I just turned 70. I'm ready for new. I'm not pastoring. I've pastored 40 years. I'm, travel I'm getting ready to shift. I could retire, be comfortable and happy, but I'd rather be obedient and uncomfortable. You know what the comforter sent for, the Holy Spirit? To help you with all the things God asked you to do that you're uncomfortable with. <laughs> you just thought it was to make you feel better. No, it's to make you feel better when you're doing something you really didn't want to do in the natural. How many of your flesh is flaky? I don't want to do that. And God said, I'd like you to do that. Well, okay, I'll think about it. I don't want you to think about it. I want you to do it. I don't feel comfortable. Well, here, I'll give you the Holy Spirit. Okay, now I feel comfortable. <laughs> Some of you didn't know that. <laughs> Until you do something that you feel uncomfortable in, you've not stepped up to what the Father has called you to do. You will never do something that matches your flesh you will do things your flesh says no, no, and your spirit says yes, yes. Everybody say, I was made for this. A life of adventure. I'm not leaving this earth without making him famous to someone, somehow, with the genius God put in me. And there is a genius in my life that displays his glory. Give him a shout. Hallelujah. 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 That's what I'm talking about. You know, you know what I like? I just refer, we'll talk about it more. But, you know, when uh, Michael Jordan, I don't think he made the high school team. Remember that? Just because you didn't make the team first time around, don't go crying home and put down the basketball. You could miss everything God has for you. In high school, there were people outshining Michael Jordan on the team he couldn't make it, but in the end, he would outshine them all. If you will discipline what God has given you, you can actually outshine people who've left you in the back of the crowd. Don't ever count yourself out. Count yourself in. I, until you really appreciate who God made you, you'll never take it to the limit. How many knows, young man, you had to appreciate that Hemi engine in your car before you could put gas to it? Blah, 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 blah. Hey, that thing wasn't made to hear. That thing was made to go. Blah, 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 blah. Some of you going around, blah, 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 but you never put the metal to the pedal. 
you don't like the way you sound. And God said, I made you to run. Just would you trust me? Live an adventure. So what I want to do, I want to just speak this prophetically over everybody under the sound of my voice. And those of you here, then I want to minister some words. And what I tell you is this. Do you know when it says, God said to Joshua, only be strong and courageous? How many, know, how many times have people used that verse? Only be strong and courageous. Probably millions and millions of Christians. Do you realize you're stealing Joshua's prophetic word? Why? Because in the word that God gave him was a principle, an authority. And in that word, when we take it, only be strong and courageous, the anointing in that word over Joshua's life comes into our life. So when I'm prophesying over people, I don't always have to look at you, Joshua. You can take when the anointing hits you, you say, I received that word. Many people have received that word, only be strong and courageous. But it was a personal prophetic word for Joshua. Wherever God speaks to a person, what God's saying is when you read their story, it can be your story if you'll receive the anointing in the word I spoke to them. If Joseph, if you... Joseph, who went through all of this, if you feel like you went through some of Joseph, if you look at his story, you can receive if you'll believe like Joseph. If you're like Esther, you can rise above your captivity and the oppressor of Haman. All these things are written for our example, and God said, so you can do it again. And when you identify with it, you can identify with their victory. So as I prophesy, but I just want to say this. Some of you are coming out of a season of confusion and loss. And the Lord says, I'm getting ready to take the confusion into direction. If you'll look at me instead of what you know and don't know, God said, you wait on me and I act for those who wait on me. And some of you are asking for directions and I'm saying, get closer to me and I will be your direction because this is a walk in the spirit. This is not a decision of your mind. I need you to lay down your mind and pick up your spirit because your mind cannot go into the place my spirit has determined you will go because your natural mind will fight what I am saying, but I'm telling you, I will use you in ways I've always known and the Lord said, you will have to see the victory I'm about to give you before you can believe the next phase of what I died to give you. And the Lord said, don't th say I'm too old. Caleb, take your mountain. Don't say I'm too young. David, rise up, break the fear off of God's people. Take down that Goliath. Don't say I'm unimportant. Don't say, but I'm in a situation of captivity. Remember that little servant girl that was captured by the Syrians? She looked at Naaman and said, I know where you can get a miracle. She never lost her voice. She had more to do with him being healed of leprosy than the prophet who just said, dip seven times in the river. She was a part of, don't ever lose your voice in a bad season. You still have a voice. Your season will change. I believe when Naaman went back, she was never a servant girl again. If he was willing to give all that gold, what did he give to the girl who told him which way to go? She probably got her own condo and a servant because she never lost her voice. Come on. Even when you're down on a certain situation. Now listen, how many know you can be winning over here? Three, four, five different things and losing on two things over here. You never have so much victory, you don't have anything to deal with. You never have so many negatives, you don't have any victories. Amen. Are you with me? Yeah. Somebody said, they'll call me up past say, how's it going? I said, you want heads or tails? Because when everything is victory, that means you're in heaven. If you don't have a problem, you're not, you're not interfacing with earth it's, who's been having hell flowing all over it. You're in delusion. It's not that big, but there's always something there. When I have no problems, that means I'm in heaven and I'm done. The fact that you have several problems means you're alive. 
take it a compliment. I like having several problems. <laughs> but I like having all these victories. So whenever I have a, a victory, I just remind my problems, you were once one of these. You're about to become one of those. <laughs> all right. I want you to, like I started off, I want you, all of you just take your right hand. I want you to stand up with me. And I want you just to, like Moses, I just want you to just take your right hand, just put it up. Now, I want you to understand this. Moses, who was called by God, God said, I'm not even going to listen to you till you put your right hand up because I'm not going to have you looking like a wimp in front of my people. I know inside they want to stone you. The Egyptians want to kill you. And you're saying, why did you ever pick me? Just get rid of that. Lift up that hand, and you're about to see me show up for you. And you're going to be known as the deliverer because that's what I am. And part of my identity is going to be stamped on you. You are a deliverer. I'm telling you, everyone has your hand lifted. You are a deliverer for somebody. There's somebody that needs your right hand up in the air. Say, you're going to make it. And Lord, I thank you. I want you to say, Red Sea, roll back. And God said, I'm so glad you quit crying, Moses, and actually stood up and acted like the God I am. That you actually looked to heaven and believed me for a miracle. Listen, I'm going to tell you, if you don't have a miracle, you're never going to your promised land. If it's just all in your head, it ain't a promised land. It's a you land. A promised land takes a miracle. There has to be the devil on your back saying you're not going to make it. There have to be people that were with you saying, let's stone him. We knew, we knew he wasn't a good leader. And God said, uh, are you going to stand up and lift up your hand, Pastor Michelle? Lift up that hand. This is not about male or female. This is about the anointing of the Holy Ghost and God's choice. And when that man, woman of God, lifts up their right hand, God said, now I'm about to make a way where there was no way. People that are putting you down are going to be praising on the other side. They li they're a little bit of fair weather Christians, but at least they'll dance with Miriam on the other side. But right now they want to stand back while other people want to talk about killing you. How would you like to leave that congregation? <laughs> There's murder in the eldership, but plus God, we got through the Red Sea and everybody's doing better. But hallelujah, Lord, I thank you, Father God, for the anointing, and I thank you for the breakthrough. And I want to prophesy, just put your hand over your heart. And Lord, I want to release, Father God, the greatness of Father to continue to throw, flow through people, that this will be a time of vision. Some of you, God is going to anoint your eyes. He'll say, look again. You have a problem, but I'm going to say, look again, and I'll give you the answer, because you're going to see what you missed. You're going to, what you missed, I'm going to show you something you didn't know existed. I'm going to open up your eyes. I'm I'm going to give you another thought. People are going to come to you and say, well, it either has to be this way or that way. And God said, that's the devil trying to set you up. It ain't this way and that way. God said, I see something in front of you that's different. And the Lord said, I'm the creative God. I'm the God that can reveal mysteries. I'm the God that can open up things in the spirit. And Father, I thank you for that in the name of Jesus right now in Jesus' name. Some of you are about to step into an all, another whole dimension. Uh, this, this guy right here, what, uh, Trevor Noah, is that what it says? Okay, what's your first name? Ray. Ray, I don't know why, but I just want to give you, and while I'm using you, I believe there's other people just going to receive an anointing. I felt like I saw you going down this freeway like you were in California. You ever been to California? You work in California. And I saw like you were, uh, you know, it's the only place that has about 10 or 12 lanes across that I've ever been in. And I felt like God said, you're not going to miss your exit ramp. And I felt like there was a division of like five lanes going this five lanes and you had to switch from one side to the other. And the Lord said, I'm going to help you get across the traffic that's trying to get you to go the wrong way. And I saw the fire of God coming down on top of you. And the Lord said, you're going to know my, you're my son, but you're also a man of God. And I heard God say, there's something coming. I don't know why, but I keep hearing transportation. 
I thank you, Father God, that, Lord, there are things being transported into this situation. I felt like I saw contracts and deals, and God said, I'm going to show you the wisdom of Solomon is resting on you. And God said, you're making plans. And I saw buildings going up in different regions of America. And God said, like Nehemiah, you're going to help build, 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 and you'll help build. And the Lord said, I want you to keep an eye out for those who will work there as well as those who own it. And God said, there's an anointing on you for greatness. I I felt like there was coming a time because of what you do that you're going to stand in political circles with different projects. And God said, you're going to be a voice of justice and a voice of prosperity to many. And I felt this, there's coming a, a, a large donation out of what you're doing that actually is going to bring a societal, some societal shifts in the name of Jesus. And Father God, I thank you that you give him favor like Joseph in Pharaoh's courts. Now, the thing I'm going to tell you about Joseph, some of you need to hear this. Joseph had a God dream, but he had to have a Pharaoh who worshiped a demon, put a ring on his finger to make his God dream come true. Some Christians are so crazy, holy, stupid, they would have thrown that ring off and say, I'll never wear that devil ring. But God used Pharaoh. Now remember, this guy, if he dies, everybody who serves him has to be buried with him in a pyramid. This is not a good president I'd want to serve. You can serve him. (laughs) Are you with me? But Pharaoh's going to put a ring of favor on your finger like Joseph, and you're going to have the ability to do business for somebody you don't even agree with. And God said, bless the land and bless my people like Joseph. Now let's just give God a thank offering because now I don't know you. I didn't know you do stuff in California. So I'm telling you what you do know. Now I'm telling you some things you don't know. And God said, watch it unfold. Watch it unfold. And uh, I'm looking over there. Uh, this, uh, you have on a, a red T-shirt? What's, what's your name? Carter? No, the, you have the coat and the red T-shirt. Jonathan. That's a great name. Uh, Jonathan. I don't know why, uh, when I looked at you, the first thing I saw was like a soccer ball in front of you. I was expecting to see a basketball. But I saw a soccer ball in front of you. And I don't, do you play soccer, first of all? Okay, you play basketball? Okay. Let me me just say this. I don't, you, you probably watch little clips. How many of you know that I see them doing things with soccer balls we never dreamed of? With basketballs, moves I never dreamed of. I don't know how they keep coming up with new moves. But with it, there are people, they can flip the ball over their head in front of them, all kinds of stuff. But this is what I saw. I felt this, you're going to learn things that you watch other people, and there's an anointing that you're going to walk in And it's going to be like that soccer ball that you take it to another whole level. But I felt like when I looked at you, I felt like this. God has determined to make you wealthy. And I saw business coming over you, an opportunity. And the Lord said, I want you to open up the book of Proverbs. And I want you to get the wisdom of Solomon that draws the wealth of Solomon. And God said, people will trust you because of your wisdom, not just because of your intellect, but you have an intellect. But this is a, this is a reality. People, listen, I used to work at a place, food place, and they made fun of the Christians. A lot of them smoking dope back in the 70s. But whenever they wanted the money to go to the bank, they'd give it to the Christian they made fun of. They wouldn't give it to their drug buddies. <laughs> How many know they may make fun of you, but they trust you. <laughs> and I'm telling you, 
there's something on you, Jonathan, that God's going to place you beside someone who's very successful. They're going to take you, so to speak, under their wing until you get eagle's wings. And so, Father, I release that anointing. And I'm going to say this, dream, carry the dream of God until the dream carries you. All of you under the sound of my voice, if you don't carry a dream, you cannot carry the thoughts of heaven. Dreaming, you dreaming is equal to God thinking. So just say this, everybody under the sound of my voice, just say yourself, wake up, dreamer. Dream again. Now, you know what makes people stop dreaming? When they dreamt and they got hurt. They put their dream away. Said, don't, uh, no, you're just going to take me into hurt. Listen, if you're not a hurt dreamer, you don't qualify to be a winning dreamer. You're going to have to dream past the nightmare. Just say, dream again. I've had to tell myself several times. Somebody asked me, said, Dale, when I was 30 years, they said, uh, how is it you've been 30 years and you're still a pastor? I said, <laughs> I didn't quit the seven times I felt like it. I kept on dreaming. And when I felt like quitting, I just shut up and wouldn't listen to me. I said, Dale, you cannot talk to yourself right now. Because <laughs> you'll be too hard on yourself. Do you know some of you are so hard on yourself, you put the devil in the unemployment line. At least make him work for his breakfast. Let him accuse you and then call him a liar. And every negative thought he's bringing against you is actually to unhook you from your promise. He don't lie to you about what, does, what doesn't matter. He only lies to you about what steals your destiny. Some of you where the devil's been lying, you're not going to make it. It's because he knows you're so close to making it. How many of you are ready for breakthrough and breakout? See, God's looking all through the earth. He said, I'm looking for someone to show myself strong through. Is there somebody that would give me enough room to actually show up and show off that I actually am a God, that, that I'm not dead? You know, now, this man over there, he has part of Joseph wrapped around him. That little, all those, that scarf of many colors. And uh, when I looked over at you, the first thing I felt was, you're in a season of transition. And I heard the Lord say, I'm about to unveil some hidden assets. And in the unveiling, the Lord said, I'm going to cause you to coach this thing forward. And it reminds me of a part of a, uh, from, a uh, from a movie, but, a, the, and, but this is what every coach does. He said, now that I found out who we are, let's find out who we can become. And the Lord said, you're going to have a vision for people they don't even have for themselves. I don't know why, but I saw education all around you. And the Lord said, you're a teacher's teacher. And the Lord said, I don't know why, but I saw three books coming out of your right hand. So, Lord, I release that in the name of Jesus. And I release, Father God, this to be the time. And God said, I want you to create some books that will be opened by students across the nation. Lord, I just release, Father God, that anointing to write and to receive from heaven. Now, I'm going to tell you how I wrote the books I have. I would be thinking about it. I'd wake up in the middle of the night or in the day when the anointing would come down on me. I'd actually write as fast as I could. When I wake up in the morning, I could actually remember the way God spoke it and I would have to change my words because I knew the revelation he was giving me, but I had to search for the words some sentences I never touched. Some I changed 30 times till it spoke what he spoke to my heart. Okay? So I speak the spirit of revelation over you. 
that the anointing will come and you start writing. And see, when I'd wake up in the morning, I could learn from what I wrote. And God said, would you let me write through you, son? Would you let me write through you my wisdom? Would you break? And I felt like this. These are not just spiritual truths. These are truths. Listen, truth has its own voice and lies have it, has its own end. If somebody believes a lie, they'll hit a wall of truth. But you can't stop truth because it always sets free. You may not believe in gravity, but jump. Are you with me? And what you don't believe in will take over. You may not believe in God, but he's more real than gravity. You will come to the end of yourself if you say you don't believe in God and you will meet truth that there's something beyond you you need. And Father, I just release the spirit of truth. I release the anointing of truth. I release, Father God, Lord, the wisdom of God. I was talking to somebody and, and I'm, I feel this is instructional for you who's a Christian artist who's thinking about going into the secular. And this is, this is my word. You don't have to say Jesus in any song, but you can never sing a lie. You don't have to tell people you're a Christian to make what you say effective. All you have to make sure is you never lie because truth carries its own weight and you can't stop it. And when I align with truth, you can't stop me. Just say, because I align with truth and the spirit of truth, I'm unstoppable. (laughs) There's a song. I'm unstoppable. No, truth is unstoppable. You, we can stop. But you can't stop truth. His truth is marching on. Let's give God a hand clap. I, want to, I just want to share as they come on up. We have some of these books out here. If you want to get them, uh, we'll have it tomorrow as well. But if you want to get all these books, uh, we, just, we just do this here. Uh, and I think we've got all four or five books plus this, 99. You can get them on Amazon, but you can't get the deal. And uh, I don't have time to share everything, but what I've shared with you is to take you in to the relationship, hopefully, that David enjoyed with the Lord that I've come into. And I just want to say this. Before you can change and go into a new season, God has to do something new in you. Because if God puts you in a new season and you keep hosting old in you, you'll take the new and turn it into old. But if I can put new in you, if he can put new in you, are you with me? I can send you back to the old and you'll turn it new. Think about this. Jesus said, behold, I make all things new and I see new on you and you create new around you. Let's give him a big hand clap as I turn it over. (laughs) Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Apostle Dale. And Apostle Dale, I know you still have gas in the tank, so if you wouldn't mind, after we close off our online audience, if I could uh, still have you still pray for a few more people, I would love that. And this is the reason why you come into the building when we have our men's ministry meetings. Ha ha, you won't be here. Well, sorry about that. But no, thank you so much, so much. It was great revelation. I actually wrote down two parts about win the the battle of the words in your mind. And uh, asking is the privilege of sons. I love that. I'm going to have to take that. I'm going to have to take that. I'm going to have to find some way to use that. But thank you so much. Wasn't that great? He was dropping some gems, as the saying goes. Some real revelation. As I always try to encourage you, this information is always online. It is always online. So go back and listen to the message again and again and again. And to uh, thank you, everybody, for hanging out. So I'm gonna, we're going to have the apostles still pray for a few more people who is in here. And we're going to sign off on the online audience. So thank you so much for being a part of this service. We thank you so much for watching. Please make sure you send this link to other people to get revelation, to get information about how to have an identity shift in the way that you think, in the ways that you think. Oswald. 
Um, I, and sir, I'm going to have you start off with uh, Brother Oswald. Come up, come up, come up. So we're not going to exhaust him, but I do want him to pray for a few more yeah. people. Um, yeah. And, and we can if go you from have there. an iPhone Thank to you record so it, that way if you turn on yeah, the phone. video or audio, it's good to record. Go get it. Yeah, just bring it up because when you want to listen to the word, what I find is people will remember what they were thinking about in that moment. But in that word, there are other things that will come into play later on, if that makes sense to you. So, Brother Oswald. Okay, let's go. So, Brother Oswald, first of all, I, I heard God say you're reaching hands across the room. 